Hello, everybody. This is uh, Jacob Sapochnik, uh, and you're listening to the Enchanting Lawyer Podcast. This is a show where we interview the most inspiring entrepreneurs from all over the world who share their ideas and uh, help us do our work better and inspire us to be um, innovative and creative. Um, today, I'm on the road again. I'm in, uh, actually, I'm in Palo Alto right now um, at the Computer Museum, the National Computer Museum here, and I just, just uh, finished the day of amazing conference uh, with international entrepreneurs. Um, um, I've seen so many interesting technologies, innovative technologies that are coming out, so I'm super excited and pumped. And uh, I'm even more excited to have uh, um, a special guest today with this international flavor. Uh, my guest today is, um, is all the way in Australia. And um, his name is Antonio Calero, and he's a social media strategist and coach specialized in user behavior management, which is a very, very important area. He helps businesses understand better their unique audiences to create effective social media content and campaigns and other communications, which are very highly important. And today we're going to talk about very exciting things, mostly um, the technology of live streaming. Antonio, welcome to the show. Hey, Jacob. Thank you very much for having me on the show. Yeah, and I know, I know we, we kind of coordinated our you know, time difference. I mean, I'm, I'm here on a Wednesday. You're already on Thursday over there, right? For me, it's Thursday noon. So I'm, technically, I'm speaking from the future. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. So first of all, thank you for uh, for taking the time to be on the show. And, um, you know, I, I, I want, well, I mean, I introduced you briefly, but why don't you tell a little bit about yourself, um, uh, you know, where you're from, what do you do, and then we can dive into this exciting uh, content we have. Absolutely. Um, my career in marketing started like a 15, I think it was 16 already, 16 years ago, back in Spain. I'm Spanish myself. That's the accent you're hearing at yeah. the moment. And uh, back then, I had a, a business, a, a couple of businesses, but I was not so interested in user behavior management. It was just purely traditional marketing. But a few years later, in 2002, I decided to move to Italy. I wanted to have an international experience. So I moved to Italy. I started working for a global company. And in that company, I had the opportunity to travel a lot through Europe, mainly UK, Netherlands, Germany, Italy, Spain, Portugal. And that's the moment in which I realized something quite fascinating to me. And it's that even if people were the same, uh, uh, apparently, but uh, behavioral patterns could change from one country to a different country, and even sometimes within the same country, from one region to a different region. So... It got my attention because the global company, and that happens with many, many global companies, they try to implement some policy or some strategy in the whole world. And sometimes that's not the right approach. Sometimes what works in one country may not work in a different country. And right. So that's the moment in which I got hooked to this thing of behavioral marketing. How some things are different from country to country or from region to region or from even in the same region from one season to the, the next season, things could change. And so, how some other traits are unique to human beings are, are universal and, and standard. So that's how I got into this, uh, this whole thing of behavioral marketing. Excellent. And, and I think, um, Antonio, just so you know, a, a lot of our listeners are uh, professionals. We have a lot of attorneys who listen to the show. We have a lot of other uh, professionals who provide service to people. And I think, you know, understanding the behaviors that drive engagement, uh, you know, we all try to get attention from our from our customers. Uh, and I can tell you that, uh, you know, in, in my business, uh, you, know, with, you know, owning the law firm, I always try to find new ways to get engagement uh, from my from my audience, so I want to understand curiosity. I want to understand, uh, you know, their desires. There's, you know, I want to understand what creates, uh, uh, um, you know, what makes them feel belong. And so I think you know what you do is is super important. But Antonia, today I wanted to focus on something that drives my curiosity in the past uh, few months, and I've been using personally um, live streaming uh, video technology for myself, for my business. Um, and I know that you've been diving into this and you've been writing a lot of articles. So why don't we talk about that? Why don't you explain, first of all, what is live streaming video uh, and how we can start using it for business? And we're, we're going to go through different uh, um, uh, points. 
Yeah, absolutely. Live streaming video is basically a video done online that it's happening right here, right now. It's happening on the moment. The most basic concept of live streaming could be Skype, uh, mm -hmm. a call through Skype. This is something that just probably 10, 15 years ago, we don't need to go further back, was unbelievable. It was mm -hmm. just thing, something that happened on science fiction movies, you know? Right. Having someone on the other side of the computer, on the other side of the world, and be speaking to that person. So that's the very basic concept of live streaming videos. However, uh, in recent times, the technology has evolved, and we are now being able to do live streaming from mobile, from uh, many other devices. So I think that's exactly what you want to talk about, right? Absolutely. And, 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 I, and I think that, um, um, you know, I, I'm very curious about two very, very innovative applications that just came out a few months ago. And, and you know, I, and, and I think you know, there's probably quite a few of our listeners that are not even familiar with those. And I'm referring to uh, Meerkat and Periscope. So, you know, why don't you talk about a little bit of those apps? And then I want to go into um, uh, a few ways uh, how live streaming can help our businesses uh, and how we can use something different. Because, again, we always want to get something different to get our message out there being different than the others, and I think today we're going to get into some of those ways. So let, let's start with Mirkad and Periscope. What are they? Well, Mirkad and Periscope are two apps for smartphones. They started being available only for iPhones, but I think at the moment they are also rolling out for Android as well. Mm -hmm. And what creates the revolution of these apps is that they allow broadcasting uh, to a large audience in real time but with the extra factor of mobility. So as I said before, live streaming, it's not something new. You could be doing a Google Hangout or you could be doing a Skype call in the past. However, these things require planification. They were complex. You need to, uh, when it comes to Skype, you say it was one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. If you have the premium version, you could have like one or two or one or three, but th th that was it, you know? And then everything was mostly relying on, on a desktop computer, so you were quite limited. Mercat and Periscope take live streaming to a whole new level in which you could be anywhere in the world, take out your mobile little phone out, and, of course, depending on internet connection, uh, you need to have a good signal, but you could be broadcasting that live to the world. And you could have, like, hundreds and hundreds of followers connecting with you. And it has also an extra good thing, and is that you can interact with that audience. It's not just like in television where you are, like, talking to people and they're just viewers. Those viewers are active, and they can also drive and engage and influence the, the broadcast. So people could make comments, they could ask you things to show around and, and so on. So that's exactly how these two apps have become so powerful and it's a whole new revolution. And so, you know, mentioning that, and I think that uh, you know, the, you know, the first thing that, that we can do with those things is actually share live events, share our experiences. And I just want to share a quick example. I, you know, a couple of weeks ago, uh, I went to see you 2 live in Los Angeles. And, um, and so at some point through, during the show, I, I, I live streamed on, on Meerkat portion of the, of the, um, uh, you know, of the show, uh, maybe about you know, five minutes where my favorite song, uh, you know, with or without you was there. And, and, and it's just, just amazing that, the, you know, within a minutes I had a, about 80 people, uh, on the live stream, I was able to bring 80 people to, to comment. And, and, you know, Antonio, what the amazing thing about, about this is that 10 minutes afterwards, you too on a live screen broadcasted the same thing on Meerkat, basically doing the same thing. And it's one of the few bands that actually do that, which is unbelievable. Um, so sharing that experience is, 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 is absolutely uh, powerful. Exactly. And in fact, Jetco, you have just touched something that it's actually the only or the most important roadblock of these apps. Mm -hmm. And it's a legal implications. Because now you could be broadcasting anywhere, anytime. Uh, right. Some companies have started to be concerned about uh, how mm -hmm. this could affect the copyright issues and, and so on. So, but th that's a, a, another thing. It's uh, something we probably need to discuss in a, in a different moment. Right. But uh, there are some companies that, um, for example, I think it was uh, when the 
new season of Game of Thrones started. No, no, actually, no, sorry, hold on. I remember now. This boxing comeback that happened uh, a couple of a month ago, uh, Pacquiao versus yes, uh, Mayweather. Mayweather. Absolutely. Exactly. And basically, people need to watch that on television um, with a pay per view option. Uh -huh. But some people were broadcasting that using Mirkat or Periscope. Uh -huh. And therefore, there were a lot of people watching that that's free. Of course, it's not the same quality, but that thing will raise some legal concerns as well. I think for the moment, the best thing is rely on common sense. Mm -hmm. And if you are going to be using something that is some content that is exclusive, uh, you need to be careful with that. Right. In, in your case, I mean, I'm sure that you two wouldn't mind because at the end of the day, what they are doing is getting more exposure, getting exactly. more, more branding. Exactly. So it's not. But still, in some events or if you are broadcasting something in a public place and there are people there that don't want to be live, you need to be concerned about these things. Of course. And, and, and then, the, you know, the legal issues behind this new technology are, you know, it's probably going to be a, uh, a discussion for, uh, for a different uh, show. But I think the, the, the point I mentioned is that it, it creates a story for the viewers. And, and, and the stream itself was only a few minutes. Of course, you know, if you stream the whole show, I mean, you know, we can talk about, you know, it's probably piracy here, but just a few minutes to share your experience with an audience. So, you know, we can create stories for for our customers. Well, you know, let's say we're in the office and I want to, you know, I want to broadcast, uh, um, you know, a birthday of one of the employees. I want to share this with our with our with our audience, so I can see that it's a beautiful marketing tool to bring my customers into my life. Exactly, and I think you have just said the best term to describe it: create stories. If you just show something uh, that could be funny, but it's not really engaging, it's not. At the end of the day, people are not gonna follow you because I don't know. There are a lot of people out there um, broadcasting their morning coffee or just how they eat a donut, and yeah, that was funny the first time I watched it. Then, however, the key to engaging live streaming videos is creating a story and engaging with your audience. Absolutely. And, and I think that's one way to do it. So, you know, there's another way that you mentioned before in one of the articles is um, actually hosting interviews. And again, a lot of professionals that are uh, they're using YouTube, and you know, a lot of lawyers, they've been talking about video, video for years. Uh, we use videos to interview people. We use videos to show, uh, you know, tell stories about, our, um, about our, what we do. How would we use interviews uh, using this technology? Yeah, um the thing of YouTube is that it's uh, not live. Basically, mm -hmm. you could just record a video. You could ask uh, your customers or on Facebook or for questions or people's concerns, and then you could create a video, but that wouldn't be live. And uh, maybe the, if your answer is not exactly what they were expecting, it lacks that, that interactivity. And the good thing of Mercat and Periscope is that you can do that on the moment. You could run, for instance, a Q&A session. So let's say every Wednesday for 10 minutes, we're going to run a Q&A with your most important concerns about whatever is your main uh, topic. And then it's not just you preparing a script and just talking. You could just see the comments of people on, that, on those apps and uh, mention the user, which I think is very important because that will uh, make that user feel acknowledge and recognize, which is key for engagement. And then uh, engage with that conversation, uh, answer that question, and then somebody else may ask a question to your answer and so on. So that's uh, the beauty of, of mm -hmm. that. And, and you know, Antonio, one thing that I like about this is that, for example, I did an interview with, uh, like a three minutes interview with one of, one, of one of the employees at the office. And because we do it on, on Periscope, uh, you know, it doesn't look like script. It doesn't look like there's lights. I mean, it, it looks basically very human. So I talk to my employee and ask a question. So, you know, how did you, what do you think about this, uh, this thing that we did? And, and then the answer. So it brings the, the customers into the firm and they see the human side of what we do as opposed to a scripted video. And I'm thinking about doing the same thing with clients, just kind of when they come to the office or maybe sometimes if we, we, we win a case, a couple of minutes where there's the, you see the real interaction where people can see it from the outside and make comments. And this is so pricey. You can't do it with a video, with a regular exactly. video. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, you need to be smart enough to distinguish when you need to do a professional video scripted with good lighting of and course. good cameras and all that. But sometimes, sometimes people prefer something more, more natural. And when we are talking about a miracle and periscope, I think that's the best scenario where users are expecting something natural. People are ex expecting you to be using your smartphone and have a bit of a shaky movement and a bit of a background noise, that's totally normal. 
If you do something that sounds very scripted and very artificial, people won't believe it. Right. That's actually the same behavior why people like the bloopers in movies or TV shows. People right. enjoy that because that's when you see the real human side of actors. Actors are humans as well, and they commit mistakes, and people like that. So same thing, and that's the beauty of Mirkat and Periscope. You cannot just stop and, and do something and record it again. Whatever you do, it's happening, and people love that. Right, exactly, and they they like to see the what's going to happen next. I mean, it's not scripted because we don't know. It's it's we are there, we are here, we are live. Exactly. And you know, what, what, another thing that I've that I've seen that I think you mentioned that before is is showing behind the scenes how you create products, how you do your work. <laughs> Uh, and and, and I, I've tested it a, a couple of months ago um, where, you know, we're putting together, we're getting ready for to file some cases. And we had a mess at the office, files were all around. And I kind of did a 5 minutes video on, on, on Periscope showing what's happening, we're about to file. You know, we don't have the labels. And it was interesting because people are like, oh, you know, we're sorry for you. And, uh, you know, hopefully it's going to work out. And it's kind of like you bring the, 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 the authenticity to your brand. You can't, I mean, I, I can't do it with a video because with a video, it's going to look like it's fake. But here it's happening live. They can see my office. They can see the mess on my desk. And it was just interesting because these, these people are now following me back on Twitter. And maybe, Antonio, before we continue, just explain how it works because uh, to, uh, these apps are connected with Twitter. But it's not necessarily <coughs> our followers. But they could become followers if they like what you do. Right? Exactly. They're a slightly different one uh, from the other. And in fact, Mirkat, which was the first app that would launch this technology, had some some legal issues with Twitter because basically they were not using uh, the API of, of Twitter like Twitter was expecting. But basically, uh, they connect on Twitter. They rely on Twitter. You need to have a Twitter account to use these apps. And when it comes to Periscope, you could import all your Twitter followers into Periscope. Not all of them, only those followers that are using Periscope as well. So Periscope will tell you from all your, I don't know, your, all your 100 followers, these 50 are using Periscope. And you could add them very quickly. But then you will have two different follower lists. One which is on Twitter, one which is on, on Periscope. Okay? And you could also follow someone on Periscope that you don't follow on Twitter. Right. And on Mirkat, you cannot import all those Twitter followers uh, so easily. That's the legal discussion they had or the argument they had with Twitter. You need to go one by one. You need to follow people. You see they are broadcasting content that it's interesting to you. So then you just add them. So even if the app relies also on Twitter in the sense that all the comments are posted on Twitter as a tweet, all the favorites are also posted on Twitter, which helps you get more exposure on, on Twitter. However, followers uh, on Mirkat are not so directly connected to, to Twitter. Right. In any case, in both apps, you have your Twitter following on, on Twitter and you have your followers on, on the app. They are right. like different. So the idea is that if people like what you do in your content, then they can actually continue following on your other channels. Um, exactly. Because exactly. You, you, you're providing value. Uh, you know, one thing that I want to also co cover here is that uh, uh, you know people who, who who do training, who teach people how to do stuff. So yes, we have those how to do videos on YouTube, but what do you think is the power of live streaming when we do uh, uh, training? Yeah, the the best thing is that you do it live in the moment. You cannot pause uh -huh. it. You cannot stop it. Okay. On on YouTube, you could be recording a video and then you could. Cut it, right. uh, adjust whatever, and then uh, keep showing. While here you are, like first of all, you are showing things as as they happen now, and then a very important thing of training is a Q and A. I mean, when you are in a classroom, traditional training, like we went to school, you could raise your hand and ask a question to the teacher, and the teacher will give you an answer on the moment. This is something that you don't have on, on YouTube videos. Right. You could have it as on, on the comments, but that means that you will need to create a further video or reply to with another comment or a video comment, which is not so immediate. Right. However, doing that in real time, it, it, it improves the uh, connectivity and the engagement factor with users. You know. And let me give you an example, uh, Antonio. I, I'm, I'm going to start doing uh, – we do a, a monthly uh, Q&A chats on Facebook where I, I basically uh, answer questions. But it's not re necessarily live because they'll post the question. I'll come back after a few minutes and I'll answer it. <laughs> but I can see – and I'm going to start doing this on Periscope and America where I'll be live uh, announcing to people that I'm going to be on and I'm going to be answering their questions as they ask me. In fact, 
uh, a colleague of mine, um, a very, very, um, and I'm going to give him a, a shout out to Mitch Jackson. He's a very innovative uh, attorney in the social media. He's, he's in California as well. And he's uh, one of the uh, uh, first innovators uh, in the space of, um, um, it's a technology where um, uh, you, you stream you stream on the web. It's not it's not on um, it's called Spreecast. So you, you it's not on a, on a mobile phone. It's on a, on a desktop. So he invited me a couple of weeks ago, where we answered questions from people on legal issues, and we, we were live on Spreecast. So it's kind of a you know so it's a, it's another way to engage with people, which which was very interesting to see, uh, because people will actually ask questions, and if they see the person answering them, what a beautiful way to show your expertise without having an edited va- factor here, right? Exactly. One thing, uh, one important thing of uh, we talked at the beginning of the podcast about yeah. user behavior. Uh, some some traits are are common to all humans or most 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 people you know right. and one is that we humans are visual beings we rely on our eyes as the main 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 sense which means that content that is visual is more engaging than content that is not in that matter uh, if you ask questions as text and people make a question as text or, or you provide answers as text it may work. People may read it, but people tend to get tired of reading comments quite quickly, especially nowadays where we are bombarded with so much information every day. Right. You could put that in a, as pictures, you know. However, when it comes to pictures, you are limited by the, the size of the picture. You can just feed a certain amount of text in, in an image, you know. Videos, it uh, combines the best of both worlds. You could have a conversation with what is visual, visual content. So that's videos... Uh, it's a that people like a lot. Now, entering Mirrorcat and Periscope, that brings video to a whole new level because it's live. It's not something that, as we said before, you have just recorded. So all those comments that we said before that could be boring and a lot of text and a long question, you could just ask that on the, on the moment and people uh, on the other side of the phone could answer that uh, out loud. And th- I think that's... Uh, the greatness of these two apps, the uh, interactivity and connectivity with users. Absolutely, I agree. And, and I think in the past you mentioned, and, and this is something that really interests me, is is the behaviors that drive engagement. And if you're talking about live stream, why don't you let's go over quickly about those those behaviors? And I think one of the first one you mentioned was curiosity. So let's kind of kind of touch some of those <laughs> and explain what are these behaviors that drive engagement? Because I think it is important. <laughs> Yep. Yeah, curiosity yeah. is w- one of the, the most important ones. It's right. uh, we human beings are curious beings. We like to we like learning new things, and that's something that uh, when you are in America as a, as a user, I mean, right. and uh, you don't know what to, to go. So you connect to the app, you browse, you're scrolling, and you see different things, things that may be new to you, things that are happening on the other side of the world. And that's something that uh, clicks your curiosity. Right. For example, I was preparing an article for Social Media Examiner, and um, I was reading, uh, I was going through my through my newsfeed on the app, and I realized a broadcast from a TV show in LA. And I, I don't live in LA, so what's happening there is not really that. Right. It's irrelevant to me, but usually it's not that I will watch a TV. But I was curious to see how things were happening in the back end. This was basically a news anchor uh, using the app to broadcast uh, the studio behind the scenes. What happens, how these people prepare for the for the 11 p.m. show. And he was showing the coffee machine. He was engaging with the uh, questions and so right. on. So I think that was great. That got my curiosity. I, I, I always wanted to see how things happen in the back end of a, of a TV show just five minutes before the, the news started. Are the news anchors uh, nervous? Are they sitting at the table? Are they just having a coffee? What's going on? And that's something I, I click uh, and I watch the whole thing. It was like for 10 minutes and I was right. watching there, something that otherwise I would never watch what was happening in that TV show. Right. So I think that's one of the best uh, or the first behaviors associated to, to this technology. And, you know, another one that I find very interesting, and you mentioned it, is the sense of belonging. And I think sense of belonging, you cannot get with video, which is on YouTube. You cannot get it with written text. You know, and, and to me, this is the most powerful uh, uh, part of, of using this technology. Because once you're out there live, streaming, answering questions, engaging, showing people you're vulnerable, they, they, they feel that they belong to what you're trying to sell them. And then it's very, diffi- very easy 
uh, to be the lawyer for them, to be the accountant for them, to be the uh, you know the, the the coffee shop they're gonna go if you if you stream it. So it's the the sense of belonging to me is a very very powerful uh, 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 yeah. tool. The, the good thing of these apps is that both of them they will tell you how many people are connected, and because right. they are live, it's limited by time differences right. in the in the world, and so basically uh, you are. Mm-hmm. It's quite strange that it will end up having like millions of viewers. It's that's not not going to happen. Huh? So basically, when you connect, when you are broadcasting, you could see okay, in this uh, broadcast they are like a 20, 30, 50, 100 people connected, and that makes you feel part of that small reduced group that are interacting and are receiving a training or Q and A from someone, or so that makes you belong to to something, you know? Right. Excellent. So I think you know this is um, you know we covered a lot of uh, a lot of ground here you know this is uh, yeah, new technology and I'm, and I'm, I'm really encouraging uh, uh, people to use it um, just to try it. So Antonio, as we're coming to uh, to the end of our show, um, why don't you share with our listeners where they can find you online? You say it verbally, and I'm going to link everything in our show notes as well. Well, the best way to find me online is uh, on my website. Because I have all my social links are there, so that would be www.antoniocalero. That would be c a l e r o. dot com, and usually I'm very active on Twitter and Facebook. Those are my two main networks. However, I'm also present on Google Plus, LinkedIn, Pinterest, other okay. networks. So basically through my website, people can access my social links and I'm happy to connect with anyone. Excellent. And I'm, uh, we're going to make sure to um, uh, share those in our show notes and all the resources we covered in the show because we had a lot. Uh, Antonio, I wanted to thank you for taking the time uh, uh, from your, you know, your, it's, it's, it's evening right now over there and sharing this uh, wisdom with our audience. And, um, you know, I am happy that I met you as a, as a professional and hopefully we are also friends now. Thank you very much for inviting me in the show. It's been really an honor being part of this podcast. Thank you so much. And to you, our listeners, if you have any questions, feel free to email me as always, jacob at enchantinglawyer.com. I thank you for your comments, uh, the shares, the suggestions, the emails. It's been really a blessing to have this show and, and see the support and the growing audience. Uh, thanks a lot and we'll see you at the next episode.